Hey folks, Chris here, introducing the third and final entry in Carlos's videos on veganism and the left. If you haven't watched the first two, you can watch them first, but you know, you don't have to. Carlos has his own channel now, so find the link in the description and hit subscribe. Okay, here he is. Hey everyone, Ultra Rotom here on Chris' channel, and this is the part three of the series about veganism. Which again, I recommend watching the previous ones first. Today's video is going to be a bit different than the other two because I will be mostly reading other people's comments and I will let other people's voices be heard. In this channel, Chris puts the emphasis on amplifying other voices and perspectives apart from his own. That's why I am participating in these videos myself, but my own personal perspective is not enough, especially as a white person. And we are here to hear the perspective of other vegans. So the other day I tweeted the following because I have several vegans in my audience, nearly all of them having anarchist, leftist, or at least progressive political tendencies, and most of them being part of at least one marginalized group. So here's the tweet. Vegan leftists. What are some things you wish more leftists knew about veganism and about being vegan as a social justice advocate, marginalized person? especially looking for POC, poor and disabled vegan voices. Your replies might be used in a future YouTube video, of course, this one. If you are vegan in, for example, in a situation of food insecurity or have been homeless, you can share your story. And as a vegan who is part of a certain group, for example, indigenous, and have been tokenized as a way to discredit veganism. Is there anything you'd like to say about it? On the previous video, I talked about tokenization and how it applies to discourse about veganism, especially in leftist spaces. If you watched that video, you know what I'm talking about. But basically, it's when people bring up specific groups of people or those who are in certain situations as an excuse as a shield to argue against vegan activism claiming that veganism is inaccessible or even impossible for people who are part of the groups in question people who are in certain situations and they scapegoat to these people as their argument against veganism. They're claiming they're, they are defending these groups of people and that's why I am asking for the opinion of people who are simultaneously vegan and part of the group who is supposedly unable to go vegan or is a victim of vegan activism, according to, to these people. So let's see some of the responses to that tweet of mine. I will share the perspectives of other vegans and then give my own additional comment. I get mad when people say it's impossible for disabled people to be vegan. It feels like they're saying that we can't make decisions on our own and it's infantilizing. Veganism is about doing everything you can to reduce the suffering towards animals. It's about doing what you're able to, not to mention how speciesism and ableism intersect and you can't totally get rid of one without getting rid of the other. I absolutely agree with this. Uh, this person is autistic and so am I and therefore I also classify as disabled. So it is common for us autistics to be infantilized and to be treated in a condescending way 
Like, we don't know how to reach our own conclusions. We don't have agency. And many people tokenize autistics as an excuse against veganism. They say that autistic people can't be vegan. And I can at least partially imagine their thought process starting from the fact that we tend to have sensory issues and sensitivities, uh, which includes food, and we tend to develop habits and routines that are hard to change. Yeah, that includes safe foods, or they can be pretty much about anything, not just food. But the moment they act like we are incapable of going vegan, like as we, as if we were unable of changing our habits and mindset for ethical reasons, that's just wrong. I've had people asking me, oh, would you tell an autistic person to go vegan? And I'm like, who do you think you're talking to? I'm autistic myself and I'm vegan. Okay, change isn't always easy. And I agree that trying to get disabled people to change just for the sake of confirming shouldn't be encouraged. But we are talking about an ethical stance about respecting animal rights and abstaining from torturing and killing them. There are other things that require an effort from our part and aren't always easy to get used to at first, such as unlearning our biases and prejudices and learning better information, learning new pronouns. And of course, this includes learning about disability how to address disabled people respectfully, how to accommodate disabled people. Yeah, they mentioned disability in general, and I'm mostly talking about autism, because again, it's how I relate to these comments as a disabled vegan myself. But yeah, it, that point applies to several disabilities. Basically, disabled people are tired of being tokenized, infantilized. Please stop speaking over disabled vegans, stop erasing disabled vegans, and stop acting like you know more than disabled people. If you're not disabled yourself, trying to exclude disabled people from an ethical philosophy about animal rights and just tossing uneducated guesses on what we what we can do or can't do is insulting and ableist and yeah as they said it's about doing what you can i've said it many times here veganism is as far as possible and practicable so if you have obstacles to changing your diet or other habits overnight you can still change other aspects in your life where animal exploitation is involved and you can transition to veganism or a plant-based diet at your own pace if that's what your disability demands it personally as an autistic person who finds change hard overall Changing to veganism was easy and quick. As soon as I realized I was contributing to unnecessary torture and deaths and violating animal rights by eating or using animals, I immediately switched to animal-free alternatives in a matter of days and two months to fully transition, give it or take, but that's my individual case. I'm not speaking for every autistic person and let alone every disabled person in the world. And it's not my goal to trivialize anyone's struggles here. The last point in their comment is super important. I've mentioned in the other two videos about veganism 
that there is an intersection between speciesism and other forms of discrimination, and this includes ableism. Commodifying and killing certain species of animals because they're, quotation marks, dumb, stupid, unintelligent, and because they don't communicate in the same way that we do, that's ableist. And, and yet, yeah, whenever I see people discriminating between non-human animal species, it is reminiscent of the times people discriminated me due to my disability and other things like sexual orientation. The more you normalize things such as the dog deserves to live, the pig doesn't, the more you end up normalizing things such as the able-bodied person deserves to live, the disabled person doesn't. Because, yeah, discrimination only leads to more discrimination, cruelty only leads to more cruelty. Okay, here are more comments from another person which are relevant because she's basically saying what the previous person said and what I said in response. Disabled vegan. Firstly, that lifestyle changes are hard but that doesn't mean you don't have to do them. You wouldn't use your disability as an excuse to be sexist or racist. You can't use it to excuse violence against animals. You will find the new positive reinforcers. Also, that carnism is an extreme form of violence from an elitist hierarchical structure. It's okay to abuse these beings because they're different, dumber, lessened than me. It reinforces all other violent hierarchical structures. Learn that from a black vegan. Yeah, this is pretty much what I just said, so I won't elaborate a lot more. But yeah, even though it can be hard to change your lifestyle or even your mindset for that matter, it's not an excuse to contribute to oppression and unnecessary suffering. Yeah, you wouldn't use your disability as an excuse to not make an effort to understand the struggles of marginalized people or even to actively discriminate against them. So why would you use it as an excuse to justify discrimination against animals and to participate in their exploitation when you can avoid it? And yeah, take a look at the other point. Same point that was previously made, the intersection with ableism with other arbitrary hierarchies, in this case human supremacy, the belief that only humans matter, screw all the other species. Oh, oh actually, well, actually, according to them, animal cruelty is wrong when the victims are cats and dogs. So, we can see they at least partially believe in animal rights. And that only helps with my case. There's proof that it comes from a place of discrimination and hypocrisy. And that according to their own logic, if they want to be consistent, they should extend their beliefs to other animal species as well. And... Look, yet another comment making the exact same point. Yes, you cannot dismantle any kind of systemic violence when you are actively perpetuating speciesism and human supremacy. And sending the message that the select few violent hierarchies are okay will end up normalizing all the other ones. There is no human liberation without animal liberation and there is no animal liberation without human liberation either. Okay, this comment here just goes straight to the point and honestly, it should be that simple. Some of us just don't like killing animals. I know it's quite shocking for a leftist to hear, but ending an animal's life is not pleasant for everybody and some of us just don't want to do that. Seriously, that's it. There should be no debate at this point. Why do we even have to explain people why hurting and killing other sentient beings without any necessity is wrong? 
why is it so damn hard to drill this in the heads of leftists? You mention veganism in leftist spaces, and they'll start acting like your average right-wing Facebook uncle really quickly. And I'm sure that leftists shouldn't be doing that. Now here's a comment from Luca. I suppose what frustrates me as a poor and disabled person is the conception that one, veganism is impossible for the poor, two, it's impossible for the disabled, Free, it's somehow justifiable to prioritize your comfort over the animals if you are poor or disabled. Again, 100% correct, poor and disabled people can be vegan, and I'm also super tired of seeing non-vegans pretending otherwise. Especially those who aren't even poor or disabled themselves. Plant-based food isn't inherently more expensive than animal-based food. People are only thinking about those fancy burgers or whatever. And there have been vegans throughout history before these things were even close to, to existing. And these super expensive vegan products don't exist in many countries or places. And vegans, of course, exist in these places, they're eating plants. And again, I'm not, I'm not trying to make veganism look like a diet or something, because at this point, you should know very well it's not a diet. But again, food is people's main excuse to not go vegan, and to claim that veganism is inaccessible. <laughs> like, if it weren't for the food part, you bet that you wouldn't see so many people around fiercely arguing against veganism like their life depends on it. There are ways to be vegan while spending significantly less money on food actually and I've seen people who adopted a plant-based diet because they were struggling financially. Yeah, it's not justifiable to disregard the animals due to your economic status or disability. If someone, for example, has an eating disorder or is living in a situation of extreme misery where they have to eat whatever they can or else they die. Okay, we aren't criticizing these people. We are focusing on those who can easily change and have no excuse. And seriously, I can't stress this enough, as far as possible and practicable, it's an ethical issue, so it's already implied that people should only be held accountable if they're able to do something. Okay, another one that says, Veganism as a social justice position is fundamentally anarchist, and that it entails all of the things that other political struggles for freedom and equality do. It means having moral obligations to others. It means states and fascists are going to fight back just as hard. Yes, veganism is a social justice movement. It fights for the freedom and equality for all animal species. It absolutely aligns with anarchism, Anarchism is against torturing and putting others in jails, which is what happens to animals. Yes, the states and the right wing fight against animal rights activists. There are people who have been jailed for liberating animals. And the more socially acceptable veganism becomes, the more right wingers will try to fight the movement. And even though many people in the left are hostile towards the idea of veganism, there is a strong anti-vegan sentiment in the left, and many criticism in bad faith towards veganism, I've noticed that many anarchists online are embracing and defending veganism, which is quite nice. Veganism is getting more and more normalized among anarchists. Another one. Okay, I addressed this already. 
industries that use animals exploit more workers because there are more steps to the process than simply farming plants and just eat plants directly. And the forms of exploitation are more brutal in animal agriculture, animal food consumption, because it requires slaughterhouse work, meat processing, labor, so more workers are exploited. And uh, yeah, also we can't stop normalizing the exploitation of workers uh, as long as exploitation of animals is socially acceptable, which is something brutal and atrocious, treating the animal as a product for their whole life. Now, there are two more comments from vegans of color that I'm going to read from a black vegan and an Asian vegan, respectively. So, my biggest problem with Jean Vegan, she meant non vegan leftist, is their complete erasure of black vegans. They always say that veganism is tied to white supremacy without evidence and ignoring that the black vegan movement predates the modern vegan movement and that black people are the largest growing group of vegans. Vegans make up 3% of the US, but 8% of black people are vegan. Uh, the other comment, veganism is somehow supposed to be a white concept the complete erasure of Asian cultures. Non-vegans keep speaking over us, acting like they are doing us a favor by completely disregarding our opinions. Their blocks pre when vegans of color call them out, etc., etc. These comments are stating that many non-vegan leftists try to associate veganism with whiteness and racism. They stereotype vegans as white people and keep pushing this idea that veganism is a white thing and that you either support veganism or support anti-racist movements. And yeah, as these people said, people who aren't white are more likely to be vegan. Veganism is more popular among black Americans. There have been in the past and still exist today several Asian, indigenous and African communities who mostly eat plants and believe in the principle of non-violence, which it includes the animal rights, of course. I see many people, especially on Twitter, posting criticisms of white veganism and white, by white veganism they mean veganism as a whole but they add the word white before veganism to make it look like they're being anti-racist and that vegans are automatically racist when the ones being racist are the ones erasing vegans of color and acting like only white people can reach the conclusion that needlessly hurting animals is wrong. And yeah, I'm saying this as a white person, but don't just take my own word for it. There are many vegans of color making the exact same point, such as the two people I've just shown in the comments. White veganism is a specific problematic form of veganism that is racist, ignores the impact of colonization and other social justice issues. Vegans of color criticize white veganism all the time. And non-vegans appropriate the term and completely misuse it. They use the terms white veganism and just veganism interchangeably. The non-vegans who criticize that supposed white veganism on Twitter tend to ignore, erase, and even block black, Asian, brown, and indigenous vegans who are correcting them and showing their perspective on, on their posts criticizing the white veganism and explaining 
what veganism and white veganism actually mean. Now that we went through all the comments, let me make a very important final point. Even though veganism is mainly about the animals, and you should care about animals for their own sake, regardless of the collateral damage caused by animal exploitation, animal ag agriculture is a leading cause of climate change and pandemics. Now, this is terrible for literally everyone. We are facing the consequences of climate change and pandemics right now but consider this as well disabled people are affected by these changes the most due to sensory sensitivities to high temperatures allergies being immunocompromised also poor people are at a higher risk during this climate crisis due to not being able to simply move somewhere safer and the environmental problems caused by animal agriculture are particularly harmful to low-income communities composed by people of color. If you haven't heard of environmental racism and how going vegan or plant-based would help fighting this issue, there's a link in the description. Thanks for watching Carlos' video. You can support him on his Ko-fi at the link in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to his new channel.